10 places on earth that modern man has still never visited. Ever since humans have been on earth, exploration and journeying to new lands has always been a priority for our species. Because of this, the vast majority of our planet has not only been discovered, but inhabited. Despite this, however, there are still a number of places across the globe that have yet to be touched by human influence. Most of these places are simply too dangerous for mankind to explore. There are deep sea trenches that have far too much pressure to be survived, places where volcanoes are constantly erupting, and even some locations that have weather far too severe to endure, it just shows that Mother Nature still rules. In this video you will know the top 10 places on our planet that have yet to see human exploration because of the extreme dangers they pose to us or because they are simply inaccessible. The Star Mountains of Papua New Guinea This massive mountain range in Papua New Guinea stretches across a large portion of the small Indonesian country and has yet to see any kind of significant human exploration. It is currently thought of to be one of the wettest places in the entire world, with an annual rainfall of more than 10,000 mm per year. The rain is so torrential that there isn't a single place in this mountain range that can house a weather station. The area was actually attempted to be explored and mapped by Jan Sneep, a Dutch colonial civil servant, in 1959. Even with two helicopters, the expedition still ended up relying on manpower alone after one of the aircraft crashed. North Sentinel Island, Bay of Bengal This small island lies in the Bay of Bengal between the southern coasts of India and Thailand, making it extremely remote. Its inhabitants, called Sentinelese people, are the only human beings who have ever lived on the island and have long since refused to accept modern visitors. Anyone who comes to the island to try and explore or study the area is immediately rejected, oftentimes with violence. In 2006, two fishermen found themselves drifting towards the island after their anchor broke free, high and upon reaching the island, both of them were killed as soon as the Sentinelese people saw them near the shore. Because of this, the island exists completely out of touch with the rest of the modern world and is basically completely unexplored. Vale do Jabari, Brazil In recent decades, the world has seen less and less of people who still manage to remain out of touch with modern-day technology and civilization, but of the few indigenous people left, the Vale do Jabari is home to 14 different groups of them. With more than 3,000 individual indigenous people, belonging to 14 different tribes, the Brazilian government has prohibited people from entering the area in order to preserve the native people and their traditions. This 32,990 square mile area is bigger than the entire country of Austria, making it the perfect place to remain secluded from modernized society and relatively unexplored by the rest of the world. Namib Desert, Namibia AMIB Namib, Portuguese Namib, a cool coastal desert extending for 1,200 miles 1,900 kilometers along the Atlantic coast of Africa from Namib, formerly Mokomeds, in Angola southward across Namibia to the Olifants River in the western Cape province of South Africa. It reaches inland 80 to 100 miles 130 to 160 kilometers to the foot of the Great Escarpment. The southern portion merges with the Kalahari on the plateau atop the escarpment. Its name is derived from the Nama language, implying, an area where there is nothing. The Nama is arid and is almost totally uninhabited, except for a small number of scattered towns. It is important because of the trade routes that cross it, its mineral deposits, the fisheries of the bordering sea, and its increasing utilization for recreational purposes. The Nama is divided into three successive north-south trending strips, the very narrow coastal region along the Atlantic, strongly subject to marine influences, the outer Namib, occupying the rest of the western half of the desert, and the inner Namib, constituting the eastern portion. The boundaries between them consist of broad transition zones. Sakha Republic, Russia This area of Russia is the eighth largest territory in the entire world, and the vast majority of it is above the Arctic Circle, making it basically a freezing cold desert with an area of 1,190,555 square miles. The Sakha Republic is only slightly smaller than the entire country of India. The difference, however, is that the climate is so brutal that it is home to less than 1 million people. If the people who lived in this incredibly desolate region of the world were spread out evenly throughout the area, there would be more than an entire square mile between each individual. The average temperature for the area hovers around minus 46 degrees Fahrenheit during the winter, and it is home to the Verkhoyansk Range, the coldest area in the northern hemisphere. 
Because of the extreme cold and freezing weather, much of this gigantic area of the planet has gone largely unexplored and untouched by mankind. Singi de Bamaraha National Park, Madagascar The Singi de Bamaraha National Park is a national park located in Meliki region, northwest Madagascar. The national park centers on two geological formations, the Great Singi and the Little Singi. Together with the adjacent Singi de Bamaraha Strict Nature Reserve, the national park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Singi de Bamaraha Strict Nature Reserve comprises karstic landscapes and limestone uplands cut into impressive, Singi, peaks in a forest, of limestone needles, the spectacular canyon of the Manambula River, rolling hills and high peaks. The undisturbed forests, lakes and mangrove swamps are the habitat for rare and endangered lemurs and birds. The reserve offers a wide variety of geomorphological structures. It is a veritable cathedral of limestone and offers one of the most spectacular natural landscapes of the Grand Island and even of the world. The western part of the plateau presents a very dissected or, le piezé, relief, most of which is covered by a dense, dry and deciduous forest. In its eastern part, the forest is interspersed by savannas. The Singi of Bamaraha is considered a center for endemism by its wealth in faunal and floral species. Yucatan cenotes, Mexico There are thousands of cenotes dotted all over Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, and their existence is as much a defining characteristic of the region as is the distinct geological feature from which they result. Once revered by the ancient Mayans as sacred wells, they are now magnets for tourists, adventurers, and explorers alike. This feature explores all there is to know about cenotes and where to find the top three. The Yucatan Peninsula is characterized by its mainly limestone bedrock. Limestone is a soluble type of rock, and if exposed to percolating water for long periods of time, say millennia, limestone will eventually dissolve. In the resulting karst landscape, the porous bedrock does not allow for fresh water to accumulate above ground in forms of rivers and lakes. Instead, drainage occurs subsurface as rain water filters through the perforated rock and collects underground where the process of erosion continues. At times, the surrounding bedrock destabilizes so much that it collapses to reveal the cave underneath, marking the birth of a cenote. Different types of cenotes exist. Some are deep water-filled shafts with strictly vertical walls, while some are shallow but wide. Other cenotes are semi-open with part of the water surface hidden from view in a cavern. Entirely cavernous cenotes are another type and can be reached only through holes in the ceiling or by walking through tunnels. The most famous of these is the sacred cenote near the ancient Maya city of Chichen Itza, located in the northwest of the Yucatan Peninsula. From its depths, archaeologists have recovered artifacts of gold, jade, and pottery as well as human remains whose injuries are consistent with human sacrifice. While human sacrifices no longer play a role in present-day Maya culture, some descendants of the ancient Maya still pay their respects to the mythical inhabitants of cenotes. Gengkar Puensum, Bhutan on the border of Bhutan and China, the giant snowy peak of Gengkar Puensum rises 24,836 feet into the air, making it the highest mountain in the world that has not been climbed by mankind. Since 1922, this massive mountain has never been measured accurately until recent years, and it was even unable to found by the first team to attempt to measure its height. Four different teams attempted to climb the mountain between 1985 and 1986, but all four failed because of the dangerous weather. And in 1994, it became completely prohibited to climb higher than 19,685 feet out of respect for local spiritual beliefs. Following the previous climbing height restriction, climbing on the mountain was banned outright in 2003 to this day, the true geography of the mountain is still disputed because there have been so few people able to actually climb, let alone map, the entirety of the massive mountain. Mariana Trench, Pacific Ocean located in the western Pacific east of the Philippines and an average of approximately 124 miles 200 kilometers east of the Mariana Islands, the Mariana Trench is a crescent-shaped scar in the Earth's crust that measures more than 1,500 miles 2,550 kilometers long and 43 miles 69 kilometers wide on average. The distance between the surface of the ocean and the trench's deepest point, the Challenger Deep, which lies about 200 miles 322 kilometers southwest of the U.S. territory of Guam, is nearly 7 miles 11 kilometers. If Mount Everest were dropped into the Mariana Trench, its peak would still be more than a mile 1.6 kilometers underwater. The Mariana Trench is part of a global network of deep troughs that cut across the ocean floor. They form when two tectonic plates collide. 
At the collision point, one of the plates dives beneath the other into the Earth's mantle, creating an ocean trench. The depths of the Mariana Trench were first plumbed in 1875 by the British ship HMS. Challenger is part of the first global oceanographic cruise. The Challenger scientists recorded a depth of 4,475 fathoms, about 5 miles, or 8 kilometers, using a weighted sounding rope. In 1951, the British vessel HMS Challenger 2 returned to the spot with an echo sounder and measured a depth of nearly 7 miles, 11 kilometers. The majority of the Mariana Trench is now a U.S. protected zone as part of the Marianas Trench Marine National Monument, established by President George W. Bush in 2009. Permits for research in the monument, including in the Serena Deep, have been secured from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Permits for research in the Challenger Deep have been secured from the Federated States of Micronesia. Because of its extreme depth, the Mariana Trench is cloaked in perpetual darkness and the temperature is just a few degrees above freezing. The water pressure at the bottom of the trench is a crushing 8 tons per square inch, or about a thousand times the standard atmospheric pressure at sea level. Pressure increases with depth. The first and only time humans descended into the Challenger Deep was more than 50 years ago. In 1960, Jacques Picard and Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh reached this goal in a U.S. Navy submersible, a bathyscaphe called the Trieste. After a five-hour descent, the pair spent only a scant 20 minutes at the bottom and were unable to take any photographs due to clouds of silt stirred up by their passage. Until Picard and Walsh's historic dive, scientists had debated whether life could exist under such extreme pressure. But at the bottom, the Trieste's floodlight illuminated a creature that Picard thought was a flatfish, a moment that Picard would later describe with excitement in a book about his journey. Kamchatka, Russia As Russia is home to one of the world's largest and coldest areas, it is only fitting that it is also home to some of the most incredible volcanic activity on the planet. On the Kamchatka Peninsula, the massive volcano belt contains 160 different volcanoes, 29 of which are still currently active, the highest of which is Kluchevskaya Sapka, at 15,584 feet tall. An area with so much volcanic activity is obviously not an ideal place for exploration, but the fact that so much of the area has been formed by thousands of years of volcanic rock make the exploration efforts even more difficult. Thank you for watching.